Okay, guys, let's catch up. This part's going to be pretty simple. It really is. Um, I have the hide glue heater going on over here. Can you see uh, right in this area? And I also have my uh, guitar plastic surgery syringe healing up and I'm trying to put all these props away and I'm pushing other ones out of the way while I'm doing it. That's why my voice is fading. But it's time to glue the neck onto, I'm going to call it Cody's junk pile. I'm giving you a big hint here. So we're taking our violin maker's knife and we're going along and getting all that oak gall ink bleed off and we don't want it to be perfect because the guitar is not perfect. Why not? Well, for starters, because I made it. Now, I've told you in just my humble opinion, yeah, humble is not a word that I'm familiar with, but anyway, this body is basically the style of a 2160 Gretsch, which you might have known as the Chet Atkins Country Gentleman or something other like that. And then the neck, of course, is a knockoff on the Gretsch Falcon, as is seen in the headstock up there. You can't see. But they have three-way switches and all kinds of toggles and everything. Now, we're going to put some Fred McDowell relic wood around here, and some of that's going to be covered up by a pit guard that I'm going to manage the scrap rattus together. But I do not like three-way switches. I do not like them here. I do not like them there. I do not like them anywhere. So they are under the Dr. Seuss complete failure list. Anyway, they put me under such pressure. So I'm going to put a pressure gauge right here, which means I'm going to drill a hole in the body. Now you can see where the switch goes right there that if I were to take a Forstner bit that mysteriously matches this but smaller than the bezel which is this part right here let's learn about automotive parts from the 1950s while we're here anyway if I just put this here what's going to happen is going to waller all over the place because the starter point on the Forstner bit is much smaller than that. So if I take a piece of wood, like one that I made a form, so I can do another type of repair. I'm punking the junk pile. Remember this one? Oh, you can't remember it because you haven't seen it yet. Yeah, there's brilliance coming your way. That's the one thing that's consistent about my channel. But anyway, if I cut through said piece of wood first and then clamp it onto the the guitar now i can set this in here and have a guide when i start and not waller out the guitar that's what we're going to do and of course when we get close to the going through we're not going to put a great deal of pressure because we'll blow out the inside of the guitar, but this is how we do it. I'm going to get this done while the guitar body comes up to temperature and while the hide glue is heated because we are going to put the neck on now. And yes, we're going to use hide glue and I'm going to talk about why. All right, there we go. We've got everything turned out okay we've got another opportunity to put some more oak gall ink down in there so we don't have it looking like it's put together by me and ooh, look at that perfect now we're going to get on the business of getting this neck off of here which look how tight that fits you want to remember and I'm going to touch on this again these necks do not do well at going like this if you got them fit right they're going to drop right down because this is tapered and that's tapered and that's why I like these kits okay guys it is time to glue the neck on but before 
we do that. I want to give you a little bit of background. No, I don't want to make the episode longer. I just want to limit the amount of time you waste doing a guitar. I got a call from my friend Barrett Fisher, who has some questions about a kit guitar and just gluing on necks in general. And the question was, what happens if I glue this neck on into this pocket here and things don't work out right? Could be for any reason, neck angle or something. So we're going to go through this kind of slow and I'm going to show you. But the first thing you want to do is make sure that this is nowhere near your work area. We don't want this. And the reason we don't want this is not because it's not a good product, but in the event something happens, you will be glad that you did not use this. Now, this is what you want, high glue. It's what they used to use. I'm going to show you something here that you're going to freak out over. But don't, don't covet my stuff. I don't want to be responsible for your eternal demise. But look at this one. Do you know what this is? Do you know that arch tops came before, where are we at? F-holes, that this is a 1918 Gibson L4. Now, what if I needed to do something and they had used some kind of white glue? They used hide glue. So I'm going to be able to take, oh, you're going to see this guitar here and there. we got some stuff to do to it, but use this stuff. Now, if you're going to be really ignorant and put your guitar in a case in Las Vegas, Nevada, or Phoenix, Arizona, or Tucson, Arizona, all cultural capitals of the world, in a guitar case, when it's 114 or 118 degrees, or in Indio, California, also cultural capital of the world, when it is 119 degrees, and you wonder why the neck literally melted off your guitar, yeah, hide glue will release when it's heated up. So there's never anything perfect, but when you're doing kit guitars and you're getting started, use this because... Worst case scenario, let's talk about this a little bit. Pulling a fret up here, when this is in here, is not going to get the coverage you need to turn the neck loose if the angle's not right. You will have to use like a heat gun or something, which is going to cause you to heat up all of this, or you can use one of these Tempco strips, temp. Co USA, yeah, Temp Co USA. You just call them up, you tell them what size you need. You might want a full size one that goes over the entire neck. They will do that for you so you can heat this up and remove frets or do whatever you need to do. But you would basically take one of these, plug it in. It has a thermometer or a, 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 what do you call it, thermostat that you wire up from <laughs> a electric blanket or something. And you basically go around and heat it up like this. And then once that happens, you can take and put a bridge that's about this high made out of a piece of triangular wood and hook a 60 string on this side of your tailpiece and a 60 string on this side and hook those into the tuner pegs and then basically heat this and work this up and down and anyway I think I'll make an episode about that but enough said do not find yourself in a spot especially on your first kit where you cannot pull the neck off now up in the hide glue heater that's up here I put water in the reservoirs so the glue runs like so. You see there's a little film on it. You want to take that off. And I also have hot water and my glue uh, syringe or guitar Botox tool up there ready to go. I also have wet paper towels ready for squeeze out and to do whatever I need to do. But... Let's talk about the neck. I have gone around and sanded and made sure that this fits. Now, 
This is tapered. You might not be able to see that. It's tapered and gets wider here. This piece is very fragile. So you want to make sure that you don't mess that up. Um, but I don't try to put this into the pocket this way and slip it in. It goes directly down and the tighter it is the better. You want to make sure that you have the guitar parts, neck and body, at room temperature. Don't leave these out in a shed where it's 36 below zero. Hello, Wapon, Wisconsin, cultural capital of the world. Or again, Indio, California, and then go in and try to glue this up, especially if they're not accustomed both to the equal temperature. But this is going to drop in like this. Now, you don't do this after the fact, but you have two clamps ready to go. And then I have, this thing is going to have a tailpiece and floating bridges. So this is going to help me out. This guitar neck Mr. Power stand is good for this kind of stuff. But I have two floating bridges. One that has the two pneumatic style, one just a common floating bridge. I know that these sit here. And so what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to take a straight edge. I'm dropping everything here. But once I get the neck on, I'm going to take a straight edge and lay it on the frets, not the nut, but on the frets. And I'm going to want right where the bridge sits, I'm going to want the neck with again this sitting on top of the frets like this like so I'm going to want that to extend back here and just be touching the top of this I don't want it up here I don't want it here if, I, if it's way up here I'm going to have to put this up 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 and then I'm going to have to set the truss rod on the neck. This one has one. And it's not going to work out good for me. So I want to set that neck angle to where it's touching right there. Not down here and certainly not up here. You want to think about these things. Where is it? Before you get the glue out. Not after. Because then you're going to be scrambling around. So, I am going to take a brush. I'm going to brush all the surfaces here. Remember, this is not going to need any glue because it sits out into this open spot. But the rest of this stuff needs to have been filed and shaped and make sure that, let's do this. When I pop this in here, It'll help if this is out of the way. And get everything set, which means I'm looking right here at how both sides face the front of the pocket. Because if one is sticking out or up or whatever, that means that the neck is twisted or altered this way. There's a number of planes. It's got to be this way correctly, and it's got to be this way correctly. So when I put that bridge, or I put that tailpiece on there. Look at that. I'm going to pull this down just a little bit. And also, my thumb wheels on the floating bridge are turned all the way down. I have, don't have them sticking up. So in other words, I want as much adjustability going up when I set this on here. So I'm going to come over here remembering that the neck is radiused. And there we go. Perfect. Let's get some a paintbrush out. Remember, we have hot water in here, ready to go. Not scalding hot. And, and our stuff is hot, and I keep my glue stuff in there, and the brush is in the hot water. Okay, first thing, we're going to want a rag to pad the top because we're going to use this as a table. We wouldn't be doing that if we were working on that 19... 18 Gibson L4, but I also want to save some time even though the hide glue sets up fairly slowly I want to make sure that my clamps are set and ready to go and that every surface that has 
an ability to mar things will have tape on the clamp. So we're going to have those set up there like that. Um, we're going to have our stuff ready. We're going to pull this straight out of the pocket. Remember that, see how hard that comes out? Remember that this drops straight in. Don't be flexing it one way or another. Something else I'm going to do is I am going to put water, hot water, on the brush first. We're not going to have the stuff sticking to it uh, unnaturally where I can't um, get stuff off. I'm going to make sure that everything in this pocket is clean along with the neck. I have a, a damp rag here so I don't have to hit the panic button every time I turn around. So the hide glue is heated up. I'm going to take the skim off of the top and coat the brush generously. And then I'm going to come in here on the sides and remember that the tight fit is going to push the glue down. So I want to get everything I can covered like so. Well, this thing's got some good prep. I barely had to do anything to this neck. Some of your kit guitar manufacturers are better about that than others. Eventually, or inevitably, there's going to be a guitar that comes out of the factory with a little glitch or a warp or something. And the good kit manufacturer will tell you this is a second. We'll give you a little bit of a discount here, but this is kind of what's wrong. And you might have to do some fill. So again, I'm not in some big hurry here. But that pocket is ready to accept the neck. This side sits right here. You can see where the scrapes were. I don't need to go all the way down because some of this sits above, but I get right to there and there. Now, if I were using some type of paint or something that had a gloss, the glue probably isn't going to stick to it really, really well. So I wouldn't paint that part. But you can see everything here is going to attach. This part is going to attach that just like these old dovetailed arch tops that we work on a lot this surface right here is really important now let's say you're going along and things start to tack up on you too quickly you can just take your heat gun and point it at the glue for a couple seconds and get it back pliable like so Okay, we're going to get everything down in there and make sure everything is good. There we go. Then, and only then, are we going to get everything out of the way and drop this down just like this, working it back and forth until everything is seated okay let's say there's quite a bit of squeeze out somewhere you can just take a paper towel get some hot water on it take your love pencil out of your wink can and just put it like this and just that hot water will help you get the squeeze out like so bingo now we're going to start paying close attention especially at this neck joint. The top one isn't the one that's so critical to me. It's that one right there. If I twist this up or pull it down or I'm not paying attention and my neck is left unsupported, that's why I have this gadget and a couple rags or something like so, I can get that where it's supported and then I'm going to go ahead in two spots 
at the edge of the fingerboard and where everything comes together not too far in and just clamp that enough to keep it on there and do the same thing on the other side. I do not want to get everything towards the middle because let me show you why here. Not too tight. I'm going to take my bridge. I'm going to put it where it goes. I'm going to take my straight edge and I'm going to make sure yeah see this is starting to be up just a little bit so I'm going to push that down a little bit too much and then I'm going to tighten everything up and for the next 15 minutes nothing in the world even this 1918 Gibson is going to get my attention. We're going to make sure that this is perfect. If we got a couple gaps starting to show up somewhere, we've got our glue syringe and a piece of paper towel, and we can just come in there and seal everything up. But pay attention to this for a good 15 minutes. Again, if something happens, heat it up a little bit. Don't be afraid to pop it out. Okay, guys, we're about 10 minutes into it. I'm monitoring what's going on here on the sides with a piece of cardstock and making sure that there's nothing significant going on there. I'm looking to make sure that my straight edge is lining up really near the top of the bridge and making sure that there's no significant gaps and the squeeze out, if any, I'm just taking a wet rag and coming along. Now, I'm going to put the finish coat over the oak gall ink on the guitar after all this is set up. But, again, I am just picking things up and eyeballing things wherever I need to to make sure that there is not an issue and once things set up pretty well, if there are any gaps, I can take my syringe that's heated up and then just come along and make sure that things are okay. This is also a good way to tell if you got gaps because if you're putting any pressure and you can see it oozing out, that uh, means that you're trying to inject glue into somewhere where there's not a gap for it to go. All right, now it's just waiting for hide glue to dry. Hey, pay attention what's going on here. Well, these pickups are going to need a little bit of work because they're not the pickups that came with the package. And um, how do you like the way this matches all of this, of course you do, and it says Mississippi house, like sun house. Forget this part about trailer house, but it's from 1961. That puppy's a little bit pricey, but you're going to say, hey, how is it that you're going to make a pit guard out of that? Well, we are going to cut it into this shape. So where'd that come from? Well, it came from this one you see that and a magic marker and you're asking yourself well how did you get this well i stole it from <laughs> bob log the third's guitar yeah that's right yeah that's right so anyway now that you're completely and utterly disamazed you know that headstock up there it's got a special shape kind of like a, a gretsch falcon but we can't leave it just like that we're going to we're going to take this fine specimen, your, your uh, lesson on entomology, entomology i.e. Coleoptera, Lepidoptera, Hemiptera, Homoptera, Hymenoptera, Coleoptera. Yeah, look all that up. You're welcome. 
anyway, it's Uncle Sam. Fly spread disease. I'm not getting that. But anyway, look at this fine specimen here under this street light. What do you know? Oh, it fits right there. Look for that now, won't you? I got work to do. All right, guys, it's time to catch back up because there was a wedding going on around here and there was so much noise. I said, anyway, I'll catch up with you about that later with some <laughs> details maybe. Anyway, I just couldn't film anything last night because I don't want to promote, well, whatever. Anyway, let's take a look what's happened here. This kit came with a knockoff of a big speed, which is the whammy bar, wild bar thing. Um, not too many Hill Country Blues players use those. So um, that was back here. It had a post style bridge, which I clogged up those holes. There's just a dot of um, high glue on there so that could be heated up and then you just screw a screw in there before you heat up the high glue and those things will pop right out. Now, I went ahead and got a clue some tail piece. Again, gold is the desi desired color theme here, which, unless I'm running a Toyota Celica that's 47 years old, probably not my thing. But this is a Cluson trapeze tail piece. You see the K? It's beefy. It hooks on right there. Now, I told you guys before not to drop, drop gold stuff on the floor and chip the painting off but look I've told you before that when they bookend the two pieces of wood together this was flamed maple underneath there yeah I covered it up so what you want to find the center now just because there's a line here that may not be the center so we know that the fingerboard up here at the neck gets wider that's what you're looking for in tree trunks by the way widening taper towards the bottom but we take a straight edge and we lay it right there like so on one side we make a mark right here and then we do the same thing on the other side break on through to the other side yeah and then you make a mark right there and then you measure millimeters you find El Centro El Centro, California, culture of capital world. And then you extend that line down here. And you line up the piece that I just dropped on the floor. These union guitar parts actors will do anything to get more time. Anyway, that sits up right here. And then you mark and drill those. Now, because... The grounding wire, oh, he just jumped way out in the weeds. Yeah, the guitar strings need to be grounded. And on a arch top that has a post-style metal bridge, there is a hole that comes up through this post hole, a small hole, that runs down that you run a wire up through. So again, if you ever want to convert this back, you're going to look for that. But since we're not doing that, we are actually going... To pull this tape off now like I said while I was cussing last night about the wedding I was getting a lot of stuff set up here and you'll see that there's a large hole right there where this goes I want this to be under here because this is pushback wire y'all have seen this before but in case this is your first 
picnic, I can just pull this back like so, and I can wrap a loop in this like so, and then when I put the screw in right there, it will ground the strings because I'm going to take this wire now, watch carefully, I'm going to Magicians always do this if you ever seen that because they're doing something else over here where you can't see but anyway I'm going to put this in like so it's going to go through the tail block, which is about right there, and then I'm going to start Bending it Like so Now There's a tail block Right in here support and then I'm going to look In and at some point here, I'm going to be able to fish the wire out up through here and make my connections. Then I will cut this off and peel it back and attach it to one of these strings. I've told you guys before, if you ever pick up an old arch top that has some kind of sound hooked to it, most of them were grounded this way. So when you pull everything apart, be very careful right here because number one, if you don't know about this wire then you'll learn the hard way when you take it to a luthier and they charge you 80 some dollars to figure out that you're a fool or worse yet if you do know about it and you forget then you will have lost your grounding wire in there and you have to fish a new one anyway that's how that works that is a piece of a 1961 mississippi license plate which is also going to show up as the pit guard up here I was in a quandary about what to call this guitar, and then it dawned on me. The guy that it's going to is awesome. He's played some Fred McDowell stuff for us. I think I should give you a link to something he's played. I even maybe built a Fred McDowell themed guitar for him before. Anyway, this is the 61 Junk Pile, because that's 61 Highway. It's the longest episode I made. Let's get a different camera angle now. Okay, we'll pull this around a little bit here and there as we go. Remember those post holes were there. If you ever use a post setup and there are holes made already and they're too tight, don't drive the post. Use a reamer. Um, and don't forget, again, there's a wire hole that runs diagonally down into the body cavity. But the way this was set up was like a um, Gretsch, a lot of three-way switches and stuff. We went ahead and put this pressure gauge in here. And this switch hole right here, we're going to put a piece of Fred McDowell relic wood. It will come from uh, the grounds of the Stuckies that... George Mitchell found Fred McDowell working as a gas station attendant in Como, Mississippi in 1967. Real piece of wood there. There will be another one right here. But that left, I want, there's a bridge and um, neck pickup. They're separate. They're different from um, the ones that come with this kit. So we had to make some surrounds, and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but... The two um, potholes down here, I expanded those and laid out their layout, laid out their layout right. I took this fancy thing here and laid it between these two and put marks on it and then transferred it up here and did some triangulation to get that. Okay, so now here's the trick. Once you've got all your holes laid out, you're going to take your reamer. You're going to go down and make sure there's no fiber sticking around. Just tilt that a little bit. Make sure that these holes are appropriate to the size of your potentiometers and get things laid out where it's not confusing. You're going to have to pull the potentiometers up into there. So you take a piece of dental floss, you tie a loop in it, you wet it a little bit and you go start working from the worst one first get that out of the way first you know it's kind of like if you knew which one of your marriages is going to be worse you could get that out of the way first anyway take this coat hanger put a little kink in the end of it and reach in there with your shaky old man hands and hook that 
and pull that up there. And then what you can do is you simply take your clumsy thumbs like this and make a double loop like this and pull it around the top of the potentiometer and then you pull that up through the hole just that easy. Now I like to use these tooth washers for um, pots because when you get inside of an arch top you don't want things spinning around like these nuts that I should have taken off a while ago but you put one of those in there like so and then it's just a matter of again you want to make sure that you don't pull your dental floss so hard that you have to start over but and then you want to tie this off fairly high up on top not at the bottom and when you pull it together you make sure that it cinches up at an angle that way when you pull it it's more tilted this way than this way there you go easy money okay so here's what it looks like we've got the dental floss through the hole for the pot we've got it noosed around the top slot of the pot shaft and we've got our tooth washer there and we have ready to go uh, a regular washer a smooth washer and a nut for the top of the potentiometer and we always ignore our mother and put them where she told us get that out of your mouth but anyway and we're just going to make sure nothing is hung up I have everything labeled properly and bingo now I just have to keep a tight pull put the washer onto the dental floss somehow like so and drop that down and once I have that on there I will just put the knot on now I've got a piece of a tape here that I'm gonna mark for with a B for baby and me and we're gonna put that back here because this harness goes to the bridge pickup and this one goes to the neck pickup and we're going to keep those separate we're actually going to do our soldering up here how else could you burn the top of the arch top and turn it into a junk pile if you did it any other way okay one little thing i want to show you from the bag of tricks i have the spanner has teeth on one side here none on the other here vice versa on the opposite side we want to make sure that our potentiometer nuts are tightened up all the way because arch tops are not good at being worked on after the fact by the way this will also work for your tuner nuts and once I have all of these tightened up sufficiently I will actually put a dot of Loctite on a spot on the threads, let that soak in, and then I will put another knot over these. All right, next, these gold foil pickups that the artist likes, and they go along with all the gold stuff here, would not fit the original cutout. So we made some of this surround stuff here, like so. And it's gonna cover the gap that's there because of the tad smaller pickup of course we have the coating on here and everything is drilled out to where the up and down adjustment works and then we went around and put chick flick teal screws of the appropriate sizes where they need to be to make sure these things run and operate just right like i said if you're going to do that kind of stuff you want to make sure that your adjustment 
poles aren't going to hang on anything. Use care when working with this stuff, with the springs and stuff, because they will fly across the room, and that will be the end of it. Of course, these pickups have poles that adjust up and down individually. Okay, a little trick here that somebody's flying over with an airplane and trying to get my trade secret. You'll see that there are chick flick teal screws there, there, but not here and here. That is because this fancy pit guard is going to ride in, and we're going to want to match the radius right there. There goes the airplane. I hope you didn't hear me. So that means that these are going to have to set in like so, but down here below the surround. By the way, these surrounds used to be cream colored and they look now like a uh, sand sandy canyon black with a little bit of chick flick teal speckle on them wonder how that happened anyway back to this we've diced up this plate and so i made a couple pencil marks as you saw earlier in the video made a cut there 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 and there and now we're going to take our dikes which come in handy for this we're going to grab up to where we want that bend to stop you see that and then we just work it in like this and then we simply bend back and forth using a chromagnum neanderthaletic motion until that piece is gone also on these plates the edges of the plates are knurled over knurled and so when you're picking like this, you don't want this edge to be up here. Slice and dice. You want it to be down here. That is if you're going to be playing a guitar that has tetanus stuff, exposures all over it. Alrighty then. We are going to put a couple rubber grommets out on this part to keep these down where they're not rattling all over the place. And ain't that pretty? It's actually a mess. You know it. Just lie. Say it's nice. You know what? I might as well do the coveters thing on you right away. I'm praying for you over here. Don't even start. Um, it's been a while since I've seen you on this thing, and I have done a lot, including... Uh, try to torture it with a set of Diodario NYXLs, which lightest string is a 12, biggest one's a 60. So we're basically putting winch lines on this thing to see if the neck is going to hold. It does. Um, that's the nice thing about junk piles. They're tough. You don't have to worry about it. Um, we're getting down to the details here now. Maybe there's a, a hole or two thing we've got to take care of, and maybe there's a... Uh, Maybe there's a happy little oil gauge right over in this area here. Maybe. I don't know. But I've talked to you about this before. You probably didn't listen. So I'm going to tell you about it again and again until you do. Do you know who Mississippi Fred McDowell is? Of course you do. You're welcome. Now, in 1967, I've told you about this. George Mitchell and his wife Kathy left Minnesota to go down to Mississippi and he wrote this book, Blow Away My Blues. If you can find this, have fun finding it. I personally got mine from the Carolina Coastal Community College Library. And no, I didn't steal it. It was discarded, just like you guys typically discard my feelings. Anyway, George went down there, found Fred McDowell by looking for a gas station attendant at the Como, Mississippi Stuckies. And that same gas tent was that same Fred McDowell. Now, these little holes I have here from these leftover things, there's only one thing you can do uh, in a decent Lutherism shop, and that's to take some bacon-flavored toothpicks and smear some glue in this hole right here. I don't want to get it on that book. The rest of it I don't really care about, but... We put that on that hole right there, put a little bit on the top like so, and then we got another hole right over there in this general area right here, like so. 
Can you see me? Can you see me, Mommy? Watch me, Mommy. Watch me. I just smeared all over here. Like so. There's going to be a lot of mojo here. And then I want you to very carefully get some of that glue on the edges of them little things. And then ultra carefully, where am I? What happened to it? I got to have the right one. I can't have the wrong one. Anyway, you want to very carefully put that in there like that. There you go. It's a fine instrument. Be careful. Look at that. Do, do, do. All right, we've got a little Fred McDowell mojo in there. Now, what we are going to do is we're going to put our pit guard back on here. You notice we had to do some custom work to cut this part out right now. And we're going to put some little rubber bumpers, not to be confused with rubber baby bumpers, but we're going to put some rubber bumpers under here to hold this down and hold this down and get everything out the way. And um, hang on just a minute. Let me move all this scrapparatus. Do not covet my books and my record album. So, damn. You hear all that noise? I'd give you all some of this Fred 67 wood. I'm almost out. Anyway. Just hang on there. You know you ain't got nothing better to do. I watch the demographic. I know what's going on. Oh, we got an Eli Green who do voodoo bead up on that wonderful headstock. You see it? You see what's going on in that picture? You see what that says right there? That says Mississippi Tax Commission. So this headstock is a tribute to the fact that somebody's going to get your money. Choose wisely. All right, oh, hey, you caught me doing the final quality control check. This is a good place to stop this episode because it, this guitar is D-U-N done. Um, yeah, I'm looking at Ruben Lacey. Come on, Chick Flick, Teal Pointer. Pick up the pace. Ruben Lacey, Sun House. Alan Wilson, that's what that triangle's all about. There's a lot, a lot of stories in this guitar, but it is beautiful if you're the same kind of wrong as I am. Listen, this guitar is going to head out to Mississippi by way of, a, I think, an airplane, but it's going to somebody you all know has several of my guitars. I've been pretty lucky lately because I've had a guitar, an arch top like this, go to uh, out to Ireland. I've got a guitar that's en route to uh, uh, Kentucky right now. Uh, this guitar is going to go out and join its sister to come out of Shad, the Mississippi Mudside. Hey, Wendy Jean Garrison, how you doing out there? But I hope um, we can get this guitar and uh, Wendy Jean's guitar together and, and, and get some footage. Guys, when you send me footage, make sure you shoot it horizontally, not vertically. This right here. This is the kind of footage that makes me famous and that's really what this is all about. In all seriousness guys, uh, I enjoyed building this kit. It came together pretty quickly and um, like I said, I got some heavy, heavy strings on here. The truss rod is where it is. Uh, the bridge it can go all kinds of down. Um, there's a lot to take off of that over the years. Truss rod hasn't been adjusted. Everything turned out good. <laughs> I swear, Grover Imperials on a junky guitar like this, Tammy signed it. There's so much I want to tell you about this guitar, but we'll tell you about it next time when we hear somebody's good play it. So, hey, give me a like and subscribe if you haven't, and watch for the final episode on this one very soon.
Thank <laughs> you.